welcome to my channel dear friends today we are going to discuss about very important topic called as amygdala and the septal areas so please subscribe to my channel for new videos of neuroanatomy as well so coming to this amygdaloid body or amygdala and the septal areas so exactly what is this amygdala and what is the location of this amygdala now we are going to see that so amygdala it is a collection of gray matter it is a collection of gray matter which is in the shape of almond okay it is in the shape of almond which is located in the temporal lobe beneath the gyrus ambiens gyrus ambiens and then gyrus semilunaris and also the uncinate gyrus so beneath these three gyri we can identify this almond shaped gray matter which is called as the amygdala or amygdaloid body coming to the location of this coming to the location of this amygdala it is located in the temporal lobe where exactly it is present at the roof of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle let me let me clear so listen carefully so the amygdala location is it is located in the temporal lobe strictly speaking it is located in the roof of inferior horn of lateral ventricle so when you see the lateral ventricle it is having three horns one is anterior horn posterior horn and inferior horn anterior horn which is extending in the frontal lobe of cerebrum posterior horn which is extending into the occipital lobe whereas the inferior inferior horn which is extending into the temporal lobe so this inferior horn of the lateral ventricle it is having the roof on the floor at the roof of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle we can identify this almond shaped gray matter of collection called as amygdala and this it is continuous behind with the tail of caudate nucleus yeah here you can see that this picture already have discussed in the under the basal ganglia so the basal ganglia we have discussed about one is caudate nucleus and the caudate nucleus it is having head where it is going to join with the putamen of lentiform nucleus and then it is having a body then it is having tail as well the tail is joined it is continuous with the amygdala so amygdala it is continuous with the tail of the caudate nucleus and then the fibers of striated nucleus issue from its posterior end what is this striated nucleus i will let you know shortly yeah this this is about the location of amygdala then parts of the amygdala parts of the amygdala it is having two parts one is cortico medial part another one is baso lateral part cortico medial part and baso lateral part what about this cortico medial part what about this baso lateral part now we will see that so cortico medial part which is receiving so here it is exactly the location of amygdala is like this okay so here we have we are finding this olfactory bulb olfactory tract and here you can identify the lateral olfactory striae medial olfactory striae then intermediate olfactory striae okay so here we can see that so here you can see the lateral olfactory striae and this is the medial olfactory striae and here you can see the intermediate olfactory striae so coming to this the inputs and outputs of the amygdala simply you can remember amygdala parts are the two parts cortico medial part baso lateral part okay two parts and it, the afferents and efferents means inputs and outputs of the amygdala let us discuss about this so this part we are going to take it off and we are going to see zoom yeah here you can see that clearly so the lateral olfactory striae from the lateral olfactory striae the inputs are coming and enters into the cortico medial part whereas the basolateral part basolateral part which is receiving inputs from the para hippocampal gyrus para hippocampal gyrus so this is about the input of the amygdala input of amygdala right and left right and left amygdaloid bodies means so we are seeing uh, one in one cerebral hemisphere we are seeing one amygdaloid body 
in the same way opposite side also we can identify in another, another temporal lobe so right and left amygdaloid bodies or amygdalas they are communicated with each other through interneuronal communications interneuronal communications so in addition the amygdaloid bodies of both sides are connected by the commissural fibers commissural fibers through anterior commissure already have discussed about anterior commissure in the white matter of cerebrum the white matter of cerebrum so the chief outputs chief output channels of the amygdala are conveyed by stria terminalis stria terminalis and ventral amygdalo fugal fibers ventral amygdalo fugal fibers so let us see this or uh, how the stria terminalis is uh, going outside from the amygdala and what about this ventral amygdalo fugal fibers we'll see now so the fibers of stria terminalis stria terminalis mostly arise from the cortico medial division of amygdala and proceed backwards proceed backwards along the roof of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle on the medial side of the uh, at the medial side we can identify the tail of the caudate nucleus then the stria it turns forwards in conformity with the course of the caudate nucleus so already i have shown you one diagram so amygdaloid body it is continuous with the tail of the caudate nucleus so the outputs of the amygdala which are extending posteriorly along with the tail of the caudate nucleus and it is running posteriorly yeah, here you can see that this in this picture we can identify here you can identify the inferior horn of lateral ventricle so approximately this amygdala is present here at the roof of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle so the afferents or outputs of the amygdala which are extending posteriorly along with the roof of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle and along with the tail of the caudate nucleus that is extending into the body of the caudate nucleus extending along with the body of the caudate nucleus then after that it is running between it is running between yeah, here you can see that it is running between medially it is related with the thalamus and laterally it is running with the body of caudate nucleus body of caudate nucleus so it is running medial to this caudate nucleus medial to the body of caudate nucleus okay so and then the medial relation of the striate analysis is the thalamus medial relation is the thalamus here it is accompanied with the vein called as thalamus striate vein thalamus striate vein and also here it is also related with the choroid plexus choroid plexus and then it is reaching to the interventricular foramen of monroe interventricular foramen of monroe anteriorly then at the floor of the interventricular the foramen of monroe it is going to divide into three sets of fibers three sets of fibers one is supra commissural fibers commissural fibers and then sub commissural fibers supra commissural fibers then commissural fibers and sub commissural fibers okay so three sets of fibers you remember the supra commissural fibers supra commissural fibers terminate in the septal nuclei which is present posterior to it okay then the commissural fibers pass through the anterior commissure and communicate with the opposite side opposite side commissural fibers and connect with the amygdaloid body and what about the subcommissural fibers are they terminate they terminate in the preoptic preoptic and anterior nucleus of hypothalamus hypothalamus and anterior perforated substance here you can see that so the subcommissural fibers they terminate in the pre-optic and anterior nucleus of hypothalamus i will show you another diagram yes in this picture we can identify here you can see the anterior commissure i'm just marking here and then just below that we can identify pre-optic and then anterior nucleus of hypothalamus it is approximately present over here anterior nucleus of hypothalamus here the subcommissural fibers are going to terminate okay and some fibers some fibers they join with the columns of fornix here you can see the fornix so some fibers they terminate in the fornix then while other fibers they reach the posteriorly and reaches to the habenular nucleus habenular nucleus through through stria medullaris thalami stria medullaris thalami 
okay so these things i will step by step i will explain you how they are reaching to this habenular nucleus and then uh, how it is going okay striamedullaris thalami what is about this striamedullaris thalami i will explain you in the next class okay so that is about the uh, striaternalis striaternalis okay then next other output is ventral amygdala fugal fibers ventral amygdala fugal fibers so they form prominent trunk and project directly to the anterior perforated substance here you can identify small perforations this is nothing but anterior perforate uh, anterior perforated substance so the ventral amygdala fugal fibers they terminate in the anterior perforated substance and then also it also terminate in the septal area just below the hypothalamic sulcus okay so then other fibers they terminate in the dorsal medial nucleus of thalamus here you can identify the dorsal medial nucleus of thalamus some fibers they terminate in the dorsal medial nucleus of thalamus so that is about the amygdala amygdala then moving to the next topic is the septal areas so the septal areas septal area which is we can identify in the third ventricle septum pellucidum so the septal areas include the groups of neurons in the para terminal gyrus here you can identify the two gyri one is para terminal gyrus just in front of the lamina terminalis okay in front of the lamina terminalis you can identify para terminal gyrus and in front of it you can identify para olfactory gyrus so these areas include the groups of neurons in the para terminal gyrus here i'm just showing you with my pointer it is also called as subcalosal area why because it is present below the corpus callosum okay the paraterminal gyrus is continuous above uh, continuous above with the indusium griseum indusium griseum and below it is continuous below it is uh, continuous with the medial olfactory stray below it is continuous with the medial olfactory stray okay here you can see that paraterminal gyrus below it is continuous with the medial olfactory stray then what about the output and the input of this septal nuclei is so the output and input input is coming from amygdaloid body amygdaloid body through the striated malice and then on the ventral amygdala fugal fibers and the hippocampus via dorsal fornix here you can see the fornix and here is the i'm not showing you any hippocampus over here in this diagram why because in the next class i am going to explain clearly about the hippocampal formation then you will understand clearly about this output and input of the septal nuclei then the output is one is hippocampal formation retracing by on dorsal fornix then hypothalamic nucleus hypothalamic nucleus so hypothalamic nuclei and midbrain reticular nuclei reticular formation through medial forebrain bundle so that is about the output and input of the septal nuclei then what about the experimental confirm observation we can identify the septal nuclei is electrical stimulation of this particular area electrical stimulation of this septal area inhibits the aggressiveness and produces pleasure reaction and often penile erection as well so that is about the a uh, septal nuclei so the two parts of a uh, limbic system we have discussed in this today's topic okay so in the previous class we have discussed about the olfactory pathway olfactory bulbs and then olfactory tract we have discussed medial and lateral olfactory striae we have discussed in this class we have discussed about amygdaloid body and we have discussed about the septal nuclei thank you dear students